and Artif. So we hear about innovation, we hear about going on the ground to educate young people more and also asking United Nations to multiply work already done in certain areas. So building on that, would you agree, would you add more? How do you think we can do more to improve and really tackle the root causes of religious intolerance around the world? Yeah, I think I agree with much of what the panel members have said. But, you know, we're talking about five, ten years down the line, the way things are going in the world, we might not be here five, ten years down the line. So my recommendation would be for the UN, which is in a, in a unique position, to do more practically to try to end global wars and conflicts. Because, you know, I grew up um, hearing the sl slogans, never again, lest we forget, you know, say no to racism. But we, we've already forgotten. You know, whether that's the war in Gaza, the war in Ukraine, or the many other conflicts that are going on right now, these things are causing hatred and division in other countries. Like in the UK, I can speak about the UK, you know, ever since the Gaza war started, there's been a massive increase um, in anti-religious hatred and in division. And so the UN needs to move past empty slogans now. I know we've spoken a lot about this, but it needs to, it's, about, it's high time we move past that. And the UN has the capacity to implement its resolutions and to actually enforce its resolutions, whether that's by peacekeeping or by more diplomatic pressure. Because if we don't create an atmosphere of global peace, then peace in communities will disintegrate as well. And we live in a world where, you know, in the global stage, we see, you know, double standards. We see uh, inconsistent application of international law. And then, of course, that's going to cause resentment amongst people. Of course, that's going to cause discontent, right? And so also, like, for example, the Security Council, we have five powerful and rich nations who then have the authority to dictate global affairs. That's not justice. That's not even democracy. So if we don't have justice, how are we going to have peace? And if we don't have peace, then, of course, there's going to be extremism. So that's one thing that I feel that UN should be taking more practical steps. Um, dialogue is important. Dialogue is the first step. But practice is very late in the day now. You know, the world situation has gone very, very dire. The second thing, from a media and faith perspective, it's really important uh, to create spaces for interfaith dialogue because that brings people together, um, that removes tensions, but also to leverage the power of social media and modern media podcasts um, because I don't think that's being utilized enough. And that's where young people are, to give young people a voice and then amplify their voice and also amplify the voice of religious leaders. And then that will then create an atmosphere of hope and optimism, which is directly needed in the uh, world today.